Hello and welcome to this video. If you are a software engineer or a knowledge worker, you probably know about how important it is to be able to do deep work, to concentrate on a problem, to have stretches of time where you are not interrupted, you can fully concentrate on your problem and make progress. Sometimes in programming or software engineering, this is also called being in the zone. In this video today, I will talk about how you can measure or how you can get a feeling about how often you are in the zone, how often you are doing deep work, what interruptions are and where they are coming from and how you can eliminate them. But before we do that, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm a computer science professor. I have more than 20 years of experience in software engineering and I used to manage a team of software engineers with more than 100 software engineers distributed globally. Let's come back to the topic. I already made a video about what deep work is and how you can use this, how you can build systems to use deep work for your work. And once you have done that, you will have blocks of time that you have devoted to deep work. And now the question is, how often do you do this? How good or how bad are you doing in those blocks and how can you keep track? And there are essentially two ways that you can do this and that I also use. The first one is by using tracking tools that automatically track what you are working on, how long you are working on them, whether you are interrupted by certain things and what is interrupting you. And there are two tools that I can recommend. There are also links in the description. This video is not sponsored by any of them. It's just recommendations, but I will have affiliate links in the description. So I get a small kickback if you use them. So the two tools that I can recommend are RISE.io and Rescue Time. They work both in a very similar way. They track what applications are open on your computer, what's in foreground, what's the thing you are working on right now. And then you can categorize the different applications. So for instance, you can say, okay, an IDE is productive work, is focused work. Browsing YouTube is entertainment. Doing email, being in Microsoft Teams, being in Slack is communication, is not considered to be deep work. And then it will track over span of a day, over a week, over a month, how much time you spend in these tools and in these different categories. And then later on, you can use this data to find blocks of time that are classified as being productive, as being deep work. So for instance, if you have spent two hours in an IDE, not being sidetracked by Twitter, by browsing Reddit, by whatever, then this would count as deep work time. If you have 10 minutes in an IDE, five minutes emails, 10 minutes in the IDE, half an hour YouTube, 10 minutes in the IDE, half an hour in Slack, right? Th that's definitely not something that we would consider to be deep work. And those patterns can then be used to help you looking at what are distractions. Should you maybe close Teams or Slack or whatever you use as a messaging system while you are trying to be in such a deep work phase? Is maybe email distracting you? Do you maybe need to turn off your notifications? That's a general recommendation. I would turn off all notifications. Or is maybe your phone distracting you? That's a great feature of Rescue Time. Rescue Time can also be installed on your phone and then it will also track when you pick up your phone. So you're not only getting what are you doing on your computer, but you also get information whether or not you have picked up your phone which I find very helpful because sometimes when I'm stuck solving something, then I tend to pick up my phone and trying to distract myself there. So this is one way of tracking and to identify interruptions and to get rid of them. But the caveat of those tools is 
they don't work in all environments. If you are working in an industry job, if you are working in a job where you deal with sensitive data, where in general you don't want to be tracked or where you are not allowed to be tracked by such a tool, then you need a different solution. And the different solution that I use is whenever I start the deep work phase, I write down the start in my calendar. But at school or Outlook calendar, it doesn't matter, right? I just create an appointment with the start. And then I work and when I'm done, I note the end time. So I get the time block, the time span that I spend on deep work. Also, if I'm interrupted or interrupt myself, I force myself to record this in the appointment, like picked up phone 20 minutes in. That forces you to reflect on what were the interruptions, where were they coming from, and what can I do to prevent them next time. And the last thing that I then do is those chunks in my calendar, those deep work blocks that I have in my calendar, I color them in green. And that gives me a visual overview of how much deep work I had in a given week. And so at a glance, I can see whether it was a good week or a bad week, a good day or a bad day. And I can also see patterns. Is there maybe the one day a week where, I don't know, having a meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning throws you off your productive schedule of having two hours of deep work time dedicated in the mornings. Now I'm interested and curious, have you found other ways to track deep work time? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful and liked it, then please smash the like button. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this one, learn more about how to be a more productive software engineer or in general, take your software engineering career to the next level, then please subscribe to my channel so that I can see you in the next video.